what's next for you? You know, like, uh, mm -hmm. wh where do you go from here? Like, uh, so you're with the Knicks for, for, for a while. The Knicks are, uh, not, is that off the table now? Or are you, are you still trying yeah, to work? Yeah, I right? think it's off the table now. I think they have a uh, 15 guaranteed contract. So it's nice for me to continue to train, uh, be ready for my next adventure. Uh, basketball is eventually going to come to an end. Uh, the way my body feels right now, I'm in the best shape of my life at the age 31. I wish I would have known the things that I know now at a younger age, just because I feel like I would just, I would have maximized my, you know, my God-given gifts and my athleticism. What would you have done? My diet. I yeah. switched my diet up. Do you um, eat a lot of junk? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I ate whatever I wanted just because we ran, right. you know, so much each day and we exercised, you know, so much on a day-to-day -day basis, but um, I've been putting literally, you know, high octane fuel in my body the last year and a half, and I feel amazing. You seem like a low-key guy, kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, easy to talk to, easy to approach. Mm -hmm. But when you get new guys coming on the team and you're the captain, which means they're looking to you. Yep. Uh, so you get people that want to be the alphas and want to kind of just like try to to push you around. How do you deal with that? I lead by example. Uh, I welcome all challenges. I've been doing that my whole career. Uh, every situation that I've been in, in the NBA, there was always a guy that came in to try to take my spot. Uh, it happened a bunch of times with the Knicks. It happened when I was in New Orleans. Um, you welcome all challenges. It comes with the territory. And you don't take it, do you take it personally or do you just let it roll off your back? No, I mean, I, I, if it's between me and one other person, uh, I'm always going to bet on myself. Uh, mm -hmm. I work really hard. Um, I have a drive. I love to compete. Um, I think I probably have, you know, one of the most elite uh, competitive drives in the league, and I think that's what's kept me in the league, being a guy who, you know, is a defender, energy guy, um, not one of the elite guys in the league, but one thing I do have elite is my competition. You're also into photography and fishing, uh, both things mm -hmm. I want to talk about, but how'd you get into photography? I took a course when I was at Duke, um, and I was just fascinated by it, and I always love to capture the moment. And eventually, you know, I got away from it a little bit, and eventually I started fishing. And I go and I fish in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm chasing blue marlin, uh, pretty much everything out there. Uh, and there's been so many moments where I was like, I wish I had my camera. Yeah. You know, and uh, these cell phones don't do what I see out there any justice. Um, I would need literally a 7200 millimeter lens to even have a chance to see some of the stuff that my eyes catch. And um, there's just so much beautiful natural light out there. So when I get the chance, I'll bring my camera. So you're like serious hardcore into fishing. You're not just like somebody who's gonna like go to the lake and like toss some uh, some some bobbers out there. You actually have mm -hmm. like a, a squad, right? Yeah, I have a team of, I believe there's 11 of us right now. Um, and we compete in the Gulf of Mexico um, in blue marlin tournaments from Texas all the way to Florida um, each summer. And uh, I mean, we take it very seriously. We have fun with it. We have a group of kids um, who are ambassadors for our brand. Uh, we have right now 12 kids, um, all under the age of 18, um, boys and girls from all over the country. How long have you been into fishing? I know it's become like a bigger brand for you. It's become yeah. something of a business, right? Absolutely. So um, how, how did that un unfold? My first NBA team was in New Orleans um, with the Hornets before they switched over to the Pelicans. And uh, oh, that's good. you dodge that bullet. Yeah, <laughs> I was a Pel I was on the first Pelican team actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, fishing is pretty much a way of life down there. Um, it's a sportsman's paradise, and I threw myself into the culture. Um, I fell in love with the sport. One of my best friends in life, Ken Juan Nichols, uh, when I was at Duke University, he took me fishing at a couple lakes uh, down in North Carolina and he eventually came with me to New Orleans and we fished together down there and it just kept evolving and then eventually I bought my first boat. Uh, I learned under some of the best captains that the Gulf has to offer and um, we just kept going, we kept learning, we kept asking questions, uh, we kept messing up, we kept catching big fish and uh, it evolved to what it is now, slang magic fishing. What's the uh, biggest fish you've ever caught? The biggest fish I've ever caught. Um, whale? No, I've caught some really big sharks that I didn't want. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've probably caught a 500 pound hammerhead a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, big. Just accidentally? Sharks. Like you were going for Accidentally. I was going for something else. I was snapper fishing. Oh. And uh, <laughs> it just ate my snapper, and a big <laughs> hammerhead was on it. 
Uh, we caught a, you know, some nice blue marlin uh, around the 400 pound uh, class. And those are small ones, by the way. We want, you know, eight, nine, a thousand pound uh, blue marlin, especially in the tournaments. So a 400 pound fish probably won't even, probably won't place. You're a, you're a pescatarian, right? I am. So you, you, do you eat what you catch? I do. Um, it's very hard for me to order fish at a restaurant, uh, especially since, you yeah. know, I, I go out, I hook the fish myself, um, and I make sure that no fish goes to waste. I don't overfish, you know. What made you decide to change your diet in that way, and has it helped you in terms of performance? Absolutely. Um, I think that once I gave up red meat, um, I just felt so much lighter on my feet. Uh, my body is not lethargic in any way, shape, or form. How long ago was that? Uh, it'll be a year. Um, it'll be a year in October. Um, and uh, I had uh, orthoscopic knee surgery last season. Um, they, I had some floating debris, uh, cartilage floating around in my knee. And I just had a small procedure to get it removed. And uh, during that operation, it was very humbling for me uh, just because the day before the surgery, my quad was a rock. Uh -huh. And then the day after, it was, you know, gummy bear, you know, and I was just like, overnight, how is that even possible? I, I stayed awake and I watched them do the surgery. They were like, you can have the option to go under, or you can stay up and watch. I was like, I want to watch. I want to see what you guys are going to do. Man, and, uh, that must have been interesting. To yeah, see. I watched it. I was like, okay. I mean, from what they did, it didn't seem like I would not so be able to use my quad. You try to hop in there? Like, I got this. Just oh, like, no, nah, I, I was watching it on the screen. Yeah. Uh, they didn't let me. They had uh, It yeah. was covered up where I couldn't see everything. But um, just from that point moving forward, I was just like, I need to get back on the court. And um, one, I'm not going to come back out of shape. I'm not going to come back overweight. And um, they told me I had to sit on the couch for a week and not do anything. I was like, nothing? I mean, I can't even get on the ground and do crunches or anything? Nothing. They were like, no, sit down. Wow. So then I made the decision. I was like, I'm not coming back overweight. I'm going to put all the stuff that I need to help me get back on the court as fast as possible in my body. And that's when I gave up all the nonsense. So as crappy as that was, it actually did something really beneficial for you, right? Give you that chance to sit back and kind of make a different plan to move yourself forward. Absolutely, and it's been an amazing journey for myself since then. Um, I don't eat sugar, I don't drink soda, none of that stuff. I only drink water. Just beer um, and wine and, uh, and vodka. All, all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, yeah, no sodas, no, uh, no alcohol, um, no red meat, uh, no dairy. I mean, I'm pretty strict with it. How, uh, what's your training like? Like, has, uh, I'm curious, is, mm -hmm. and have you noticed uh, your energy level being higher than it was? And is, it's kind of interesting when people do make these types of changes. Mm -hmm. They do have more energy and they respond much quicker than they think they will. Um, and it's kind of what I think draws people, you know, to keep sticking with it. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I realize is that uh, I recover very quickly from uh, extensive exercise, um, really quickly. and. In the morning, I wake up every day at like 6.30, uh, religiously, with no alarm clock. Hmm. Um, and it's an amazing thing to, you know, just my body wakes up ready to do something. I don't need coffee. I don't drink coffee. I never drink coffee, but I've never felt the need to have any of that. Wow. You know, my girlfriend wakes up. She needs her coffee. And yeah. Like, I don't need any of that. Like, <laughs> let's go do something, you know. And What time do you go to bed? I go to bed, I would say, probably around 11.30. 11.30, sometimes midnight. All right. Um, yeah, that's a solid my, my night. Mind, my mind's always yeah. thinking of ways to do something really cool, so I, it's hard to shut that off. Well, in terms of, uh, well, are you training inside of a gym? Are you still just training on a bat, like uh, on the basketball court? Are you you doing a hybrid of both? Yeah, I do both. Um, this morning I worked out. Um, I do a lot of endurance uh, training. So what was your workout this morning? This morning, um, I like to do, like I said, I'll do endurance something, but I always lift full body. I don't believe in just leg day, chest day. I think it's, you know, as an athlete, you right. need to be able to have everything fire up when you need it. And I do that. Um, I do, today I did single leg, uh, leg press on the machine, but I do high reps. Yeah. So um, I'm always doing at least 16 reps. Um, I just, over time, I just feel like my body responds to it very well, and I train my body not to get tired. So I do that, and then um, before I even do all that, I do a sprint circuit on the treadmill. Um, I keep the incline at 10, and I start at 7, and I work my way up to about 13. Yeah. Uh, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, and I'm 
tall ass on that machine. Well, man, at the incline of 10 and being 6'8", mm -hmm. you must have some tall ass ceilings in your place. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and it's the, the ceilings at the gym that I'm at are pretty high. So. <laughs> now, that's, um, has, has your training changed uh, from when you were a rookie in the league to, to now? Like, has it evolved, and how has it evolved? Absolutely, it definitely evolved. Um, I think that when you first get in, you think you need to be the strongest guy on the floor. And um, that's not necessarily the, the case. Um, I always was like, all right, I need to get stronger, I need to get stronger, I need to get stronger. And I was already strong. Mm -hmm. um, and I was more than strong enough to compete at the level. Um, I wish I would have known as a rookie the things that my body really responds well to. And if I would have been in doing, <coughs> excuse me, my endurance lifting that I'm doing now, um, I would have been, uh, I would have been somebody that would have probably made you tired just watching them play. Where do you go from here? So what, what's next? Are you going to focus on, you, do you want to keep playing? Do you still have that passion or do you want to focus on, on fishing? Do you want to focus on your other endeavors? I have a lot of other endeavors. Um, I love basketball. I love to compete. Um, the way my body feels, I feel like I would be selling myself short to stop playing right now. Okay. And um, I'm going to keep playing as long as I can. Um, I love to compete. Yeah. I love to lace them up, you know. Back when I was a kid, you know, the joy that I got just by competing with my cousins, my friends in the neighborhood, I still get that every time I lace my sneakers up with complete strangers. I really don't care. Yeah. Um, so I do want to keep playing, you know. But one thing that I've learned in this league is control what you can control mm -hmm. and don't stress over the things that you can't. And that's my mindset now. So I'm going to continue to train. Um, training is a lifestyle for me. So regardless if I did tell you right now that I was done playing basketball. I was still training like yeah. I have a game tomorrow. Yeah. You know, so, uh, but I do have other endeavors that I'm going to continue to work on, and uh, I've been able to multitask the past three years. So I've been doing it all. So can you explain to me how how it works? So w as your you know teams are, I'm, I'm I'm guessing getting in touch with you, mm -hmm. your agent or something, yep. and how do, how does the whole process unfold? Is it like? Um, Hey Lance, we got uh, we got some interest in this team, and you're like, I'm not moving there. You're right. Mm. Or is it like you're gonna hear all offers, or is there certain spots you're just never gonna go to? I'm 31, so uh, a 31 and, and not a superstar. I don't have the luxury to say no. I'm not going there. I don't want to go here. You know, um, I'm a real I'm a realistic person. I know myself. I look in the mirror and I make, you know, realistic. I set really realistic uh, goals for myself. Um, Do you write them down? Honestly, um, I say them to myself every day. Okay. And if uh, if there's a new one that pops up that I might forget, I'll put it in my notes in my phone. But um, anything that you know wants me to compete for them, I'll go and play. Yeah. Um, I'm not picky in that regard. I love New York City. This is home. I've been blessed enough to play for the team that I grew up idolizing for the past five years. So. It was a blessing, yeah. um, but you know, all good things come to an end. I love New York, I'm always gonna love New York, and I'm still always gonna be a Knicks fan. When you do wanna hang it up when it's time and you're ready to, to walk away, mm -hmm. what is it you wanna be remembered uh, as a player? Because mm -hmm. it seems to me like you wanna make sure that you're remembered outside of basketball, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I mean, that that's awesome that you're trying to help other people, but inside of the league, what is it that you want them to look at back at your career? And I think? want everyone that, was able to lace him up alongside me to say that I was probably one of the best teammates they ever had. Um, I take pride in that. Um, I care about all my teammates. Uh, I compete hard. Um, I've always been there for everyone, especially if they called me at any hour of the night. I'm always picked up the phone. Um, we all go through, you know, difficult times, mm -hmm. and uh, I had teammates that have been there for me to vent, and I've been there for a lot of my other guys to vent. Um, being a guy who Got into the NBA through the back door, going through the NBA D League at the time. Now it's the G League because Gatorade bought it. Um, guys know that I can relate to some of the things that they went through, and to uh, not act like I haven't been there before. Yeah. So guys respect that, and I've always just been someone who likes to lead by example. So. If, if anything, I want to remember that I was a great teammate. Lance, uh, that's all I got for you, man. Thank cool. you again for coming by. It's really Absolutely. a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for the cool. time. Yeah, thanks.